that looks like it. Yeah, it says they're start starting a live video. Awesome. I'll wait till some people come on. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll have some bougie water. <laughs> Nothing like fancy water. I know. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our Instagram live demo with Robert Mars. Uh, we are celebrating his current showcase artifacts. Um, and we're joining him in his studio in Reading, Connecticut. Um, as you can see, it's great lighting and uh, lots of room for him to work. Um, so if you're just joining with Arena Galleries, we are in Napa Valley, uh, specifically in, um, you know, America's wine country. Um, we have four different locations, uh, over 50 artists, and uh, we are looking forward to getting to know Robert a little bit more today and his studio and his practice as well. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to write them in the comment section and we will uh, introduce them slowly throughout our conversation. Um, and so we'll be asking Robert a couple different questions, but please feel free to say anything you would like, comments, uh, praises. Um, we actually have a, our first comment from Kirkley Carey, beautiful work, uh, exclamation point. I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, <laughs> Robert's work is stunning, and I'm looking forward to learn more about his quilting patterns and new things he's introducing. Um, and also, I'm not sure if you guys saw on our post that we just posted about an hour ago, um, our giveaway post. Uh, and so Robert will be working on today and throughout the month, uh, throughout his exhib exhibition, which runs through May 31st. Um, they, the 24 by 18 that he is actually uh, has his hands on right now. Um, and so the details to enter this contest are in the post. Uh, please, please, please participate. Um, and you'll see how it is pretty much uh, come to fruition throughout these live demos. Um, and so Robert, um, hello after my wordy introduction. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. Sorry, my kid's downstairs screaming. That's perfect timing, <laughs> right? Um, thank you, everyone, for coming to check this out. Um, you know, I guess uh, we were going to start off with sort of a question and then go into it from there. Totally. So, um, what have you been working on during the pandemic, and how do you feel it has affected your work? So, I think... It, <laughs> You know, we can all attest to the fact that it's been difficult for everyone. Um, I think one of the things about the creative mind is that when when things are bad, um, we tend to internalize them and then sort of let them sit for a while and think on them and then go to work and create. Um, so one of the things that I've found is I've always wanted to do a body of work that was abstract, um, but I could kind of never, it kind of never happened, right? Like I was working towards it and working towards it, but then it always ended up having something, uh, something like an icon on there. And uh, so with this, I started looking at the floor of my studio and seeing how organically there was layering of paint that looked beautiful. Um, and so I thought to myself, like, let's maybe try something like that, try and emulate the floor. And so I started just layering paint with really bright colors like I felt like it really needed to be alive um, and then from there I basically cut them up like I normally do and arrange them and kind of what I realized I was doing was sorting out my brain so all the worry that I was having all the anxiety that was the paper and all the chaotic brush strokes and then cutting it up and assembling it almost like a puzzle was me sort of putting things back into control into an order um, and I feel like that really just pushed it into a different direction. And so behind me, there's a ton of paintings that I've been working on that are abstracts. Um, they're just solely based in, you know, the quilt patterns that I've been looking at for the past five years. Um, and then just really, um, uh, really just sort of trying to figure out how abstract works because it's a lot of it's kind of as you go. Um, you know, yeah. which is hard for me because most of my work is so structured, um, coming from a graphic design background that I kind of knew start to finish what my work was going to look like. And with this, like I have an idea, 
But literally, like, I'll go back and put four layers of something just to get the right color, you know, to sort of, like, balance out what's going on in the piece. Um, yeah. So it's been a really interesting learning mm -hmm. experience. And I think, as, you know, any creatives know, like, when you get something, you know, when something works and then you just run with it, it's a good feeling. Yeah, it seems like in a positive light, um, the pandemic has kind of amplified uh, an under that something that could be considered as an undertone um, to your structure, uh, kind of a foundational um, aspect. So, um, for people that are just joining, um, Robert's explaining his uh, process he's been doing. I guess you could arguably say for over five years, um, and uh, how it's completely kind of shifted to this abstract quilting um, aspect. Uh, he's been quilting for a long time, but uh, he's really focusing on that design aspect uh, during this time. Yeah, and I think just exploring color, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, the end goal in an abstract piece, I don't think is as, as exact as any of the other work that I was making, you know, because yeah. this process is, is so much different. Um, and I guess with all creative work, you know, every decision you make is a part of the composition. So yeah. in looking at this, it's, that's all you have, yeah. you know, but it's interesting yeah. to step back from the piece and look at it and say, I don't really like that there's like a solid black piece there or a solid white piece and then sort of like tone it down or, um, you know, it's basically endless. Truly. Um, and also just let everyone know, Robert looks over to me on, I'm on video right now yeah. in his studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's, okay. he's, uh, he's doing the most, uh, looking at, uh, two different screens right now. There you um, go. That's right. We wanted him to have the most, uh, the, the biggest view of his studio. Um, and so what does your studio practice look like, um, from kind of like, you know, maybe like a quick, rundown of like start to finish or you know or where you just maybe just where you start really yeah i mean so so my studio practice what i've tried to do is really keep it consistent um you know my studio is on our property so i don't have to commute which is great um it's sort of shifted where i'm working a lot more at night now because the kids are doing uh, like a homeschooling like a distance mm -hmm. learning sort of thing um, so me and my wife are sort of dealing with that during the day and then literally after dinner, like I come into the studio and I'll just work really late into the night, you know, and no one's bothering me. Uh, there's yeah. no emails, there's no phone calls. And it's, so you just really like get to focus on it. Um, yeah. but as far as each piece goes, uh, I start off with, uh, wood panels. So this is, this is one of them, you know, they're, they're beautifully constructed. They're all handmade. Um, and I think that 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 works particularly well um, for my work because there's a lot of sort of there's a lot of hands-on um, and what I found with uh, with canvas is that it was too it didn't really feel structured enough mm -hmm. um, and then like I said what I've been doing is uh, in in the past I was building up layers which became the base um, this is a little bit more organic where I'm really spending a lot more time painting the paper Mm -hmm. and then cutting it and then coming in and, and layering it. Um, so this piece is basically has the structure set up to do the pattern. Yeah. Um, and then I have all of the pieces cut, um, which I didn't want to do that on camera for fear of cutting off my finger or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, safety um, first, safety first. For yeah. Sure. Um, it sounds like it's, you've gone a, a slightly more like sculptural route. Uh, not only in the way that you're thinking about things, but, um, I mean, your frames, just so everyone knows, they're just really well done. They're strong. Um, and I feel like it kind of aligns with the, uh, marks that you make and the placement of the pieces and the cutting. And, um, it's just so interesting how you incorporate two dimensional aspects and, you know, three dimensional aspects in so many different ways. And with the eye as well, like even mm -hmm. just seeing your studio right now, the colors and the and the circles and the, the squares and the angles like kind of create this sense of depth yeah i mean that's that's definitely what i want to do um i think it's um you know i tried sculpture and a lot of it was found um objects and then painted into and i found that that was difficult because you know you're relying on a very limited uh, source 
of things out there that have survived from the 50s. Um, And then, you know, I started doing those neon works, which, again, like, that's sculptural, right? It's kind of, it it was easier to fit into sculpture that hangs on the wall. Um, You know, it's easier for people to sort of digest that. And it was kind of a perfect evolution for my work because years ago I was looking at all the old neon signs and um, just sort of this part of America that is is pretty much dying. Um, Mm -hmm. And really, but I wasn't incorporating actual neon. So like by bringing that into the work, I feel like it gave it like a whole new life. For sure. Yeah. Reinvigorated it. Um, And that kind of ties to like the fascination with the icons and which we'll get into the next on the next live demo, but um, kind of ties into the whole aspect of uh, being a, like a live artifact. Yeah. Uh, neon um, in that co- in the context that you're creating it in. Yeah. Um, but to bring it back to uh, the quilt patterns, um, mm-hmm. they have been your signature style for about five years, right? Yeah. So it's been about five years, um, and so that came about after. Um, I had been doing a lot of uh, a lot of American flag theme variations, mm-hmm. um, you know, things that were based in pop art in the past. So, looking at um, like Jasper John's flags and his targets and Andy Warhol's um, camouflage and things like that, and then it kind yeah. of became stale. You know, it became yeah. too repetitive, and um, so I started looking and thinking like, what can I do? What's what's the next evolution? What makes sense? And it was really right in front of me the whole time. And it was, my wife is a contemporary quilter. And so there were these books all over the house that, you know, coffee table books that were quilts. And there was one in particular, it was a show in New York. um, I guess it must've been 2010 maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was a woman who wanted to display all of her red and white quilts that she had collected over the years. And so her husband rented out the armory and had this show and these quilts were just the the patterns were so dynamic and I think they stuck out because they were red and white um you know so there was it was like all you had was this contrasting color um and I started looking at that and Mm -hmm. going like yeah this is this really could apply to pop art you know um, yeah. Lewis actually just asked uh, if I'm hand cutting all my patterns and I am hand cutting them all. Um, that's what I was saying, you know, the razor and, but, um, yeah, so, and yes, uh, so it says to, to grow as an artist, you must be able to rediscover your work each day by remaining in awe of the possibilities. And that's exactly true, Sandra. I think that it's, yes. it's really important to not be afraid, um, you know, if, if I'm working on a commission, obviously I'm not going to do something crazy because the people kind of are expecting something. But For sure. with these pieces, like I could do anything. The sky's the limit, you know? And I yeah. think that's, as an artist, that's where you really learn is when you're not afraid to just put a big pink stroke through here that mm-hmm. normally you wouldn't have done, you know? And yeah. going back to all my jobs that I had in design, um, there were people that I would work with uh, one of them was a shoe designer in particular, and mm-hmm. he would come in with these designs that I I would look at it and I wouldn't understand them. Yeah. And literally, once it would come back from the factory as a sample, it was perfect. And what I realized is that sometimes something that seems strange is just because you haven't seen it. It's not that it's wrong. It's exactly, just that yeah. it takes time for the general public to sort of look at it and go, oh, yeah, you know, that that is that really makes sense. Bringing, constantly bringing new things is so cumbersome though too you know like it takes time you know like you spend it seems like you spend a lot of time with quilting and patterns to get to this point where uh you're seeing it in a whole new way um which is so crazy because like I, I could i just imagine you working on the iconography and the and like your past processes and then all of a sudden the past couple of months and then then this pandemic you're just like wait a second Mm -hmm. this thing i've been doing in the like you know for lack of better words in the background Mm -hmm. of my pieces is actually this really unique uh special thing you know yeah you know i think um one of the things that always really struck me was uh there's a book and i honestly can't remember the name of the book is but it's basically on art art theory 
and it talked about World War II and mm -hmm. just the destruction that people saw. And so the artist sort of took that in and be, it became abstract expressionism, you know, a yeah. whole movement from seeing the complete destruction of, you know, landmarks and people. And, you know, it mm -hmm. was the first time from above, you know, it just, it was really just a horrific thing. But again, the artist took it and ran with it and sort of digested all of that negative and made something that was positive. For sure. You know, and, and, for I think... so, and it, it could put people, people can relate, you know, and find some sort of solace within that. Yeah. Of like, um, abstract expressionism that kind of is this, whenever you stand into a large front of a large piece, it's like chaotic, but it's also like comforting. Yeah. So it's exactly to that point, you know, so interesting. Yeah. I feel like with abstract work, you can look at it, um, you can always look at it differently, right? There's so much going oh, it's, on it's in it. So, something new each time, mm -hmm. every time you see it. You know, and I think so that's like the positive part is that it always gives you a hope. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, the quilt thing really has become, uh, and in a very organic way, it has really sort of shifted my work. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, it's it's endless, you know? There's so many different patterns and the whole idea of quilting is uh it's such a rich history such a rich american history yeah, yeah um yeah. you know and i i sort of started to look at it and go wow i mean these quilts are not very expensive like but the amount of hours and the love and the quality and detail that's put into these was amazing you know and Absolutely. i wanted to sort of like pay homage to that it's super interesting too how it's you know kind of Quilts in, in uh, people's homes are kind of like put to, you know, most of the time are kind of put on the shoulder of a couch or like mm -hmm. put to the side. So yeah. it's so uh, wonderful that you're really bringing it to light, you know, yeah. in many different ways in your work. Uh, it looks like we have a um, another question by Louis. Uh, are the new abstract pieces just painted ephemeral papers? So yes. that's a great segue into like perhaps showing uh, our audience um, the start of your process with the actual yeah. pieces? Yeah, so the answer is yes, they are. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just taking entire sections of newspaper and I'm sort of just painting them um, layers, just looking at color, looking how, uh, you know, layering of color affects the whole piece. Um, so, you know, when you look at this piece, like there's, there's this striking pink um, and over something yellow, it almost becomes an orange. So it's interesting to see those kind of nuances as you go. Um, so yeah, one of the things I'm going to do today is I'm going to start this piece. So I have everything cut, um, and I'm just going to start to assemble it. And you know, what I do is I make, um, sort of a little roadmap of what I'm thinking and I kind of work out how I want the colors. Um, and then, you know, I print it out and that becomes kind of my guide, I guess, my template for making the work. Um, so I will start to do that. Woohoo! And then if you, if there's any questions that come in, we can talk about for that. For sure, yeah. Uh, there's actually a new comment uh, from Sandra. Character and devotion are the formula for success, and you're an example of that. Thanks. I completely agree, Sandra. Um, uh, lots of character and devotion here. And earlier I watched um, Sandra's video with um, Wendy, well, I can't think of her last name. You can go to her Instagram and see it. Um, and it was, again, it was so inspiring to see, you know, she took a tour through her studio, um, huge space. She has, um, she, it's a warehouse in Charlotte. Oh, cool. And she has everything from fabrics to upholstery to um, lampshades to original artwork. Um, so it's just That's great. super interesting to see other artists and see what people are doing right now. For sure. Uh, Sandra says uh, last name is Wendy O'Connor. Yes, yeah. O'Connor, right. I'm yeah. sorry that I forgot that. Um, so yeah, I can see how that right now, how important it is to have that solid base. You know, you're pressing a lot of um, um, different types of not only layers, but the saturation of the, um, that is, um, matte paste. Is that, what, is that? Um, yeah, it's just like a gel, like a liquidy. 
uh, gel medium. Um, so Louis has another, uh, Louis Live has another question. How many hours go into a piece of this scale? So just for anyone that's tuning in, Robert is working on a 24 inch by 18 inch piece. Um, and so the question is how many hours estimated do you usually take with pieces like this size? Um, I mean, these go relatively quick as long as I prepare everything. Uh, mm -hmm. But normally my process is about six weeks because it's, it, you know, there's multiple things happening at once. Um, the resin coating is like a 10 day turnaround. The panels getting created. Um, but I probably spend about three weeks from start to finish um, on any particular piece. Um, do you, so this is a question from uh, Saint Moi. Um, <laughs> uh, do you, uh, that's me, I just was being silly. No. Um, when you cut the pieces out that you painted, um, and just for reference, everybody, um, Robert pre-cut these pieces out of safety, um, so that he didn't, wouldn't cut his hand off, uh, or <laughs> finger off. <laughs> um, do you base it off of actual, like, uh, quilt patterns from the fifties and sixties? Uh, you know, it's not even fifties and sixties. It goes, it goes way back. Um, but yes, it's all, all based on, uh, traditional quilts. But um, I try and do them with a contemporary spin. So there is this whole amazing, uh, follow, not following, amazing uh, genre of quilt makers that are all doing uh, new style quilts. You know, they're using, some of them are, it's like an entire white quilt and it's just all quilting. It's just all the stitching that makes the pattern. Um, and I've seen a lot of, uh, People like Victoria Finlay Wolf in New York, who's just mm -hmm. you see her quilts and they're it's not a quilt, it's a piece of art. You know, not that they're not pieces of art, but it's like an abstract piece of art. And I felt like that's sure. really what turned me on to this whole thing. Um, is seeing that it didn't have to be you know, because I think the idea is that, you know, it's like a grandma sport, but it's not. You know, no. there's a lot of young yeah. people who are doing it. Um, there's a totally vibrant scene. Um, yes. It truly is. Um, so we have a couple questions that come in, and we can continue the uh, conversation about quilting. There's so much to talk about. Uh, from our director of sales, um, Rena Charles. Hello, Rena. Hello. Um, what pop culture music or shows are you currently into now? Um, and just just to, uh, I know from getting to know you, Rob, uh, we both are uh, music nerds, and so that's a pretty yeah. loaded question. I know. I know, right? <laughs> That sometimes feels impossible to answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, w with anything, um, I try and see all of it, hear all of it. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. It's just, I can't sit still that long. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm always listening to music in the studio. <laughs> um, and, and it changes, right? Like, I, when I was out there last year, I was really listening to hip-hop. Mm -hmm. And now it's kind of... Uh, it's gone back to uh, country. Um, the new Kill County is an amazing oh, yeah. album. It's just demos, but it's great. Uh, the new American Aquarium is really good. Um, and actually, the songs are so timely for everything. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, what else have I got? The new Damien Gerardo album, which I think is fantastic. Um, uh, we got some more questions here. Um, what is uh, the exact gel that you're using? Um, or you could just tell, like, just even just, it's like a gel medium, right? It's like a gel medium. This is, um, it's golden. It's a polymer varnish. Um, so for the smaller pieces, I'll, I'll use this. But for the larger mm -hmm. pieces, I actually use a Nova Color Nova Gel, which uh, mm -hmm. Louis, Louis lives the one that turned me on to them. Oh, cool. Um, um, I got another question here from uh, uh, Avargas Designs. Uh, I'm a quilter. Curious if you cut using quilt templates or do you use your own templates? Um, I think we might have uh, touched a little bit on this, but uh, please do um, dive a bit deeper for uh, uh, Avargas Designs. So um, I basically make them on the computer based on what I see and then... I um, print them out. And so I basically do make my own templates. Uh, my wife wanted me to start using the templates, but they don't work necessarily for me. Cause I think a lot of it is based on like 
maybe like a two inch uh, spread where mine is based on what I need in the end. So, um, For sure. yeah. so I just basically make them on Illustrator and print them out. And then when you're putting the gel medium on right now, uh, you were talking about, uh, in one of our previous conversations about how you're painting the, the, um, cutouts, uh, right. the abstract cutouts. Uh, do you find that the paint kind of, uh, bleeds a little bit when you put the gel medium on or? No, no, no the, because it's, okay. it's acrylic paint. Um, oh, okay. so it just, uh, it's totally fine. That's great. Um, Louis Liv, uh, <laughs> is Golden giving you a discount yet? If Golden <laughs> is listening, if Golden is listening, uh, please sponsor Robert Mars and Louis uh, Liv. Uh, <laughs> nope, they're not. Um, but I was happy that, that I got that tip from him about, um, Nova Color because I'd never heard of it. It's out of LA. Um, oh, wow. it's artists. It's a small company. Um, the product is really good. I mean, their paints, you know, their their paints are beautiful colors. The quality, oh, wonderful. Um, the pigmentation of it is really nice. So like the reds mm -hmm. are really solid. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, you know, this That's is what we great. do as artists, right? We like share our secrets of like how, you know, what product we use and right. how we use it. And, you know, I think we all grow and it's for the best for everyone. Um, so Sandra has another question. Um, do you lose the value? Do you lose the value when you do the layers? Um, I'm not sure the value in in what Sandra. I'm not sure what um, uh, maybe the value of the color. Um, maybe it's, maybe it was the same idea I had. Um, maybe she'll cl clarify in a second. Um, let's see here. Um, but while we while we wait. Uh, for that, uh, just to let anyone know that uh, if you're just joining, um, we are with Robert Mars in his studio in Reading, Connecticut, live. Uh, he is currently working on a 24 inch by 18 inch piece that you can win. Um, if you check out our most recent post, it has all the details. Um, and uh, his work right now, what he's doing right now is a part of a quilting process that he's been doing for about five plus years um, with different types of paint and paper and ephemera, um, layers upon layers of gel medium. Um, and to, I believe Sandra has said, she said color value. Um, um, no, not really. Lose the color value. No, I think about it. I think about um, how the color lays over one another. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think about contrast uh and for all that that goes into it for sure um john riley seven uh says with two artists in your household who is in charge of the art classes <laughs> <laughs> uh that would probably be the little guy <laughs> and how many uh just for the audience how many children do you have in their names and two uh cooper and jasper and they are 10 and 6 um both of them are very creative Jasper is 100% artist. I mean, it's crazy. This kid will mm -hmm. draw a picture and you're like, where did you even, how do you even know that detail? Um, <laughs> how so did you learn perspective? <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> so it's really interesting to see that. So cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's wonderful how you kind of just, you make these like micro decisions, but they don't feel like decisions, you know? You just kind of, I, I said this in one of the, our previous demos is um, I'm, I'm really excited that the general public finally found a definition to all, the thing that we artists are so attracted to but never really know how to define and it's that flow state. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. some people say in the zone, but flow state feels way more like aligned. Uh, you just kind of like what you're doing right now. You're just, you're thinking, but you're not thinking. Right. I think a lot of it has to do with just intuition and um yeah you know the years you've spent just thinking about art and doing things and i guess it's kind of it kind of becomes like a muscle memory sort of thing mm -hmm. where if through knowing paint and knowing how it applies um you know kind of what you're looking for as you're working on the piece and even though this is a structured piece um it's still kind of loose yeah, yeah. which i think is um the end goal right now you know. Um, so from Seven Arts Gallery, 
We have a question. Uh, Rob, are you still doing the surfing in beach pieces? Ah, uh, you know what? That was something. Yeah, I'm, I'm still doing that. I'm actually working on a commission um, that's based out in Montauk. Um, oh, that place is lovely. Yeah, so, and it has a rich history of um, surf. So, yeah. yeah, it's definitely something that's um, I won't abandon. I think it's important. Um, I think it's another part of just kind of what I've been looking at for years. Um, I just hadn't really uh, explored it. And so at the very beginning of this, I started working on some pieces that were based in surf culture. Yes, yeah, I can't stop thinking about um, how you just kind of, with these um, abstract pieces that you're starting on um, recently, in, your, in the like not recent, but like in the past couple of months, uh, sounds like, um, how you just kind of like pushed aside the icons for a minute, like, sorry, Marilyn. Yeah, uh, you're <laughs> out. <laughs> um, was that just a kind of a, a natural um, shift or was it a big, was it, was it a monumental moment? You know, like what was the, was a, was it just like, oh, this is happening now and you just realized or was it? Like, um, oh, I gotta, I've gotta, like, move, the, I gotta do something. Well, I mean, I... If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I knew I needed to, I knew I wanted to do something to change things up. Um, yeah. And so, it was a conscious decision. Um, mm -hmm. I've been thinking about abstract art for a long time. And just kind of, like, how my voice would be with it. And so I have some paintings from, I guess, around 2016 that were literally made out of scraps of my floor. So it's something that I had already noticed, um, mm -hmm. but I went about it a different way where I painted a lot of it black and used all the texture. And I felt like that was too heavy. Um, what it needed to be was it needed to be full of color. And I guess just naturally from everything going on and people sort of being depressed and anxious, you know, that's where all the color came in. I realized, um, and this, this even goes back to 2008 where I was using yeah. a lot more um, subtle color, a lot more earth palette. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I realized like people want color. They want to live with color, you know? And, and I love seeing the installation of the work sometimes where um, almost the whole room is white, the furniture is all white, and then the piece of art is where the color is introduced, you know? And I feel yeah. like that's, it's a big statement, especially for someone to put a piece of art and have it be the centerpiece of the room. For sure. So when you uh, have the, the pieces that you're placing now that are being uh, that were pre-cut um, for anyone that's just joining, um, did you take how big were those sheets? Did you paint like a like say for instance like was it like a um, eight by four piece and you you painted like you went kind of nuts with the blue and then you let it dry and then you kind of made um, your own patterns out of it or? Yeah, I'm trying to think if I have like a, a solid piece. I don't think I do. Um, mm -hmm. But so like this is this is like half of one. Oh wow! Right. So it doesn't really make sense here, but once you cut it up and you start yeah. looking at the way that the color plays off one another, and that's when you can really look at it and go, all right, this needs a little bit more light here. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and I guess that's where a lot of the decisions come in to um, to just overlay things, you know? For sure. Um, uh, we have another question from uh, Louis Liv. Mm -hmm. uh, will you incorporate any of your great half tones abstractly? Um, and so if you could explain half tones and for anyone that is um, not familiar. Yeah. So my the images... Um, the way that I use my images is not really photographic, right? I break it down pretty much like how Warhol did it, where he would make it into uh, half tones, like little dots. So yeah. when you get up close to the piece, you can see that it's just dots in different sizes that make the picture when you step back from it, um, which is a printing process. Mm -hmm. um, so to answer your question, Louis, um, I, I want to, and I started, um, I started doing that. And then I felt like I was taking away from the final piece. And so then I started taking it out just to, just to see if I could make something that didn't have any sort of living icon, um, you know, anything that was figurative in it. Yeah. And so that's kind of why. But I would see, 
I would definitely see myself going back to somehow introducing that, um, you know, I covered up a bunch of old work and my friend Paul, he called me, he got really excited and he's like, I really love that piece. Like, I love that you can see a leg and a part of a car, um, but it's not really there. And so I told him that I would make a piece. So I'm in the process of trying to work that out. But um, yeah, I think as artists, like we, we experiment, right? Like there's nothing to For say sure. that this, this isn't a stepping point to go something back into, um, you know, into figurative and uh, not have it abstract, you know, not have that be the focus of it. Yeah, variety is uh, underrated. Am I right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, you can you can do this and do other works at the same time. Um, yeah, you know, I think that's, you know, I I think all artists should have something to the side, you know. For sure. No matter if they're musicians or, you know, whatever your chosen medium is, like I think it's important because I think that one informs the other. You know, For I don't. Sure. It's I don't... like hip hop artists should be listening to bluegrass. 100%. Or bluegrass, bluegrass artists don't need to be listening to hip hop. I agree with that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, such I, a great analogy. I, yeah. I've used it, but I think about it. They're, they're, everything is so intertwined and nothing is inherently linear. So um, it's just really cool to connect the dots, though, when you're in the present and looking at the past, kind of like a, like a tiered mountain. You're kind of like, That's how I, I think of my actual studio uh, practice, but it's been a kind of on a bit of a pause for a little bit but now it's getting started up again and it's cool to look back like a tiered mountain like you can see all the tiers you came up mm -hmm. and some of them you spend a little bit longer in than than the other ones and so they're a little wider and more uh developed tiers um and they just yeah you got to go back down them to come back up anyway so right. um it's super interesting you know yeah do you think a lot of this is because of this uh, the fact that you're going back to being creative again um and doing art and i've seen some of it um do you think that it has something to do with this time as well the pandemic and for sure i think it, i think i wanted it to so i wanted to come nap come come to back to it naturally and it started to come back the past couple of months i'd say probably february right um and just to uh, challenge myself and uh so i I do collage, but nothing as intricate as your quilting. <laughs> so, um, let's see here. Um, we have another. Actually, we have another question. I'm not. I'm not a, a strategically drafting my own art <laughs> question, but it looks like uh, Seven Arts Gallery says uh, I was in Chelsea this week, and it's eerie how empty everything is down there. Uh, I, can I can imagine. I mean, um, if anyone, uh, some people on this uh, live demo knows knows this, and Robert knows as well. I used to live in New York City for about five years, and I can only imagine how um, eerie it is there right now. Yeah, I mean, we take the city for all the energy, right? That's really how we feel the yeah. city should be it's all like, the time. It's, it's kind of like a, you know, the veins, like the, the like it's like a pumping like heart, the city, and yeah. it's just weird to see like no people, nobody in it. But um, yeah, I saw people posting. I hope you're staying safe, safe Seven Arts Gallery. Um, stay safe out there. Um, and then we have Sandra says, um, the work of an artist unfolds in the experience and wrestling with the moment or sound, the way you respond to your piece. Um, wow, Sandra, you are, you are, uh, very poetic today. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting inspired. Um, it is, it is a wrestling of moments, you know? Yeah, I think that, um, artists, uh, you know, it's, it, it's all of your experiences. Yep. Right. And, and it's not just with art, it's with everything. Like the, the more creative people, um, are people that allow experiences to come into their life. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't necessarily always have to be positive. I mean, if you think about really bad times in your life, sometimes you look back on it and go, I survived it, you know, and I came out of it on yep. the other side, a better person and more empathetic to the world than, you know, not not just getting bitter from it right so this is kind of where where we're at on this Woo! so you can see it's it's starting to come together and then what i'll do is i'll i'll go back Wait, and could look you, could you hold it up again one more time yeah. for a little longer let's see wow the magentas oh they're so good 
Yeah, and I think that's, you know, like I said with color, like, I wouldn't always use magenta, but I feel like it makes sense, right? Like, I, all the pieces that you put together, everything has to have a reason. You know, I don't think it's ever really just sort of uh, random that something happens and, and is successful. It, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of like a belt, like a, you work, it's, you work towards it. You work towards mm -hmm. those moments. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. Uh, apologies if I sound disjointed. I, there, a lot of comments came through. Um, let's see here. Uh, Billy Ludwig, do you have any plans on putting any of your work on t-shirts? Um, not right now. Um, my background actually was design and for many years it was, it was apparel design. A lot of it was t-shirts. I worked for Adidas um, and a bunch of uh, other companies, New York, um, and then like Old Navy and companies like that. So I think I got burnt out on it. Um, I think in the four years I worked at Adidas, Adidas, I probably made, you know, 2000 designs. Um, and I think there's something, you know, when I moved back to New York, I started doing a line of t-shirts that was all hand embellished and like stitching in them and doing different kind of dyes. And I felt like that was interesting to me because it was not just a t-shirt that you would go and buy in the mall, but it was something that was again, like a piece of art, you know, sure. but at this point, I think I'm, I'm just focused on this, um, and just trying to learn kind of this whole abstract thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Seven Arts Gallery says, uh, you guys remind me of the D minus. I'm not sure. I don't know if you've heard of the D minus. Is that a podcast or am I completely missing something? Oh, D nice, D nice, the D uh, DJ show. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, I'll take that. I, I feel <laughs> out of touch. <laughs> Well, oh, D-Nice is, is, is mentioned oh, yeah, in... Uh, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I've heard of D-Nice. I haven't heard of the... the I've, put, I've never seen it put that way. Um, cool. Well, thank you, Seven Arts Gallery. Uh, we've got some more comments here. Uh, Prima1229. Uh, hi, Rob. Deborah from Arena here. Oh, hey, hey Deb. Hey. Um, I'm allowed to enter uh, uh, the contest for your work, for your art, LOL. I love your work. <laughs> 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 hey, Deb. Um... And then we have a, a, a young kid studio. Give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up right back at you. Hey, Mary. Uh, da, uh, uh, Dan DePac, uh, love your work traveling to California, but watching you from Argentina. Uh, oh, hugs, nice. amazing work. That's oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, hello from California and Connecticut. Uh, yeah. Both uh, sea states. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so cool that you're joining us uh all the way from argentina yeah that's pretty awesome yeah um yeah um and just uh, uh just check in here anyone that's new uh to our live demo uh my name is maggie grimes uh i'm one of the directors here at arena galleries i'm with robert mars um our current uh showcase with robert is called artifacts and it's on view uh, in our virtual realm um, until May 31st. Um, and uh, currently Rob is working on a piece that you can win. Um, it's 24 inches by 18 inches and all the details to enter to win are in the, our most recent post. Um, and uh, one of ma Rob's major influences other than um, the golden age of America and iconography and music and all sorts of different types of cultures um, is quilting. And so right now, Rob is practicing and uh, creating um, uh, the quilting pattern that he um, uses, influenced by um, the quilting community, but also um, putting his own twist on it as well. Um, and so it looks like we have uh, another question, uh, Louis Liv. Uh, your style would lend itself well to the lino and woodblock processes any plans uh not right now not with the way that my studio is because it's not that big of a studio um i love that whole process i love the printing process um it's just not there right now yeah also um something i forgot to mention in uh my quick monologue there um head on over to arenagalleries.com uh you can see uh the finished works 
by Robert Mars that are available for acquisition. And you can actually talk to an art consultant um, live on our website about Rob and his work and his current show showcase. Um, our director of sales, Arena Charles, just put uh, our URL within the comment feed. It's www.arenagalleries.com. Um, and uh, you can, right now, you can go and acquire Rob's work. You can also enter. Not this one. To win not the this one. one. <laughs> not the one that he's working on. That is that is for a special, special someone <laughs> who uh, follows the, the, the entering process on our uh, social media. And to let everyone know, this piece will actually be uh, a Chanel piece, which seems <gasps> to be everyone's favorite. Um, surprise, surprise. I didn't even know that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have one thing that was a complete, you know, complete... Uh, what do they call it? Uh, Easter egg? Easter yes, egg? or yeah. like a little, uh, um, just a prize, I guess. Yeah. You know? um, one of our other artists, uh, uh, Allison Haley Paul joined. Uh, hi, Allison. Hey. And she uh, is in Southern California. Um, and Mel uh, Clapp, which is Melissa Clapper, she is one of our leads at um, River House on our Blackbird Vineyard side. Nice. Hello, Melissa. And Melissa actually okay. uh, expressed to me earlier how much she loves Rob's work. And she actually spends Thank a lot you. of time uh, with his pieces in uh, the, in River House, downtown Napa. Um, and so I hope you're enjoying this, Melissa, uh, as much as I am. Um, it's really cool to watch uh, how quickly you're making so much ground, Robert, on your on the foundation of this piece. Yeah, there's one thing, like, I, I'm not patient <laughs> at all. I'm just not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, I'm not either. I, I like, I like the, it's kind of like mowing the grass. I, I love like, I love mowing the grass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, it's interesting. Like the guys came and cut down a bunch of trees and I was talking to them and uh, he was saying, you know, that he used to do some other job that was like IT and it was really, uh, you know, six month projects. And he's like, and I just didn't love it. And this to me, you know, in one day they cut down 16 trees had 18 inch sections of anything that could be firewood and chipped everything else. And I was like, no, I get it. Like, I'm not, I'm not patient. You, know? you can, you can actually see, uh, the, the work, like it physicalizes itself. Um, that is a, that is a really good analogy and example of that. The kind of like the stuff that people don't see if they're not an ad, administrative work. It's kind of like this weird, like uh, loophole. It's, you know, it's hard for you to see um, the systems that you implement um, and uh, things like that. So yeah. with this, is, it's completely tangible. You have the paper, you're placing, you're putting it on, you're placing, you're putting it on, you're, yeah. you're putting gel down. Um, that's something that I love about collaging is finding that right piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I fully agree. Um, and it's and it's hard, right? Because it, well, you're quilting. Let me let me back it up here. He's quilting, but in a yeah. very contemporary fashion. It's <laughs> you similar to collage, but there's a, there's a lot more pattern. And I guess you're kind of like a, you created a new type of sewing, and arguably kind of yeah, without stitching, which is glue. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so let me show you where we're at. So it's it's actually this way. Um, oh wow so um and then what i'll do is i'll go back into it when it's finally done and really step back from it and look at it and see you know i want i want it to have that layering and that depth um <laughs> and i want there to be a lot of play of color and um so i think that this is my idea but you know because it's not actually final um i can't see it yet I'm sure you gravitate towards all the colors, but what is, if you had to pick your top three favorite colors in the entire world, this is hmm. quite a question, but I, I, I know you have your, you have your surprise. I have my surprise. I know. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, three to go together. Um, I was going to do like your, like a, a top three, like, uh, first, second, and third, but, but Actually, that's more interesting. Uh, if you had to choose like um, a piece around three colors, uh, I definitely like the sort of off white. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of grounds the piece a little more, where sometimes the white becomes too stark. So that mm -hmm. 
mixed with um, what is almost like just a just a cyan. Oh, that's a great. Oh, that's that's I think a that's, solid color. Yeah, and that's a very um, it's a very retro color, you know. So I think it it applies across many different um, areas, um, and then I get, I would say black. You know, which yeah. is not just black, but there's this particular black that I use, which is a little bit chalky looking. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that. I don't like that it would be shiny. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's interesting that you say that because when your new your works that you sent to us at an arena, um, there was a lot of blue, blue, black and and that off white. And I was, mm -hmm. I was really digging it because yeah. blue is like my favorite color. Yeah. Uh, but I noticed that, like, now, now that you're saying that I saw that gravitation. Yeah. So. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. You know, those are, you can't go wrong with, there's so much, you know that blue, I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm sure everyone knows this, but I still, still blows my mind, but blue actually just does, actually does not exist in nature. I know, whatsoever. it doesn't. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? Like, it's still, every now and then I'm like walking, I'm like, wow, that color does not exist. Like, yeah. Actually. <laughs> I know, that is kind of crazy, right? Yeah yeah so. yeah um sandra i agree uh so cool and uh hello kate salem friend kate salem friend one of our other artists is joining um local napa valley artist um hey kate um and billy ludwig uh says on average how many pieces do you create a year mm. wow, what a question <laughs> uh I'm always working. So, um, you know, going back to like 2013, 2014, like those were extremely busy years. And I was making about 110 pieces a year. Oh my God. Um, I had an assistant at the time and we would literally get into the studio and start working at eight, take a one hour break at, you know, noon and then work until six and just like, just grind, you know, um, just there was no distraction um but i feel like with that being said some of the work i i wouldn't i just didn't love and now my goal is to really look at every piece um go back into it if it's not successful to me paint over it mm -hmm. you know um so sounds like you're moving like you're just moving yeah um and and I think Billy will probably attest to this. Like, you don't stop making art, right? No matter what. Like, if you're selling art or you're not selling art, you're still making it. So um, I've been doing a lot of the works on paper, which have been really rewarding. Um, and a lot of that helps you grow, too, because it's not... Like, this is a rigid structure, and I think that that plays into how the piece gets put together. Um, but on paper, it's it's just a different feel. You know, to me, it's freer because you have these deckled edges and it's handmade and, you know, it just feels less constricting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... How many... So, so do you do, um... Do you have a limited amount of time with the paper? What kind of paper do you use? Because I'm sure it gets saturated very quickly. Um, it's actually really... It's like 300 GSM, so it's like 150-pound paper. Um, so it's not yet illustration board. It's kind of in the middle. Uh, they do tend to buckle a little bit, but mm -hmm. in the end, um, you know, any frame shop can, can iron it flat yeah, yeah. and, yeah. uh, and frame it. Um, but it's just kind of nice to work on a different, a different ground. Do you feel, uh, less pressure? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely less pressure, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's one thing that helps artists grow is to not when you don't have that pressure you're kind of free to experiment you know the failures which that's none of its failures it's just you know trying to navigate to to an end result um mm -hmm. but i think that they tend to happen less for some reason or you maybe you just you start to uh allow yourself to accept accept the imperfections and the things that are not um, within your framework uh, in your studio, you know, I think that's that's a, uh, the biggest game, the hardest game out there when you're creating is is um, kind of like uh, the things that you impose on yourself and you don't even realize, you know, yeah. 
and those exercises, I, I could imagine the, the paperwork's kind of allow you to like work through things much faster. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's like a whole set of things you, that come to mind when you have that the, the work in front of you, like right now, yeah. the, the, the wood, wooden piece. And so it's like, yeah, I think it's, I, I completely agree, like um, how important it is to have that that other fire going like yeah. you, get, you kind of have a couple different campfires going on and you got to keep that one yeah got to keep stoking it yeah right yeah. um so let's see we got some more question a question and a comment um christina uh uh Gillette, i'm i'm gonna uh, try that um love your work just got a few on paper and they're amazing oh congratulations awesome. thank you christina and uh, Louis uh, Lim says, can we see some other pieces in your studio? I think it's a cool idea. Yeah. Give me a second to get this done. And then um, you can also see how messy my studio is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just for anyone that's joining, um, welcome to our Instagram live uh, studio demo with uh, Robert Mars, uh, who has a current showcase with us. Uh, that's on view virtually through May 31st. Uh, he's currently working on a 24 inch by 18 inch piece that you can win, uh, <laughs> which is so exciting. And I'm so happy for the special someone. Um, Robert's work is exceptional and amazing. And um, the uh, details to enter are on uh, the most recent post. And if you want to see any of the finished pieces, you can see them here in just a minute, um, and pieces that are in progress that Robert's working on in the studio. But uh, all of our uh, available inventory is on our website, and you can talk to an art consultant live um, and uh, acquire one of his pieces. So Robert, um, back to uh, Louis's question. Let's see, right. let's see the studio of yours. All right. So. Um, you know, I started working on a lot more of these smaller 18 by 24s, which I think you guys have great success with. It seems like people come in and they, um, instead of having one big piece on the wall, they'll buy two or three and sort of cluster them, yeah. which I think has been really cool. Um, this is another thing that I've really been looking at is just like soul music and, you know, obviously Tina Turner, she's just beautiful and um, yeah. just so lively. Um, so that's that's a new one. And I'm really looking also at all the hand done uh, concert flyers. Like I feel like that's a nice uh, a nice way to bring type into the piece. For sure, uh, I agree with Rena and Louie. Uh, they sent fire emojis and star emojis. <laughs> uh, and Melissa also says, uh, "Who's who's uh, our leader at Riverhouse? Those are a huge hit. That size." Like yeah. You said. Yeah. So these will probably end up. Oh, so good. At your gallery. <laughs> um, so yeah, and just like Diana Ross, you can, you can't go wrong, right? And I think one of the things when when uh when the world kind of seems chaotic like we want we want things that are solid to reassure us you know so going sure. back in history and looking at these things and realizing like how monumental they were in not just in music or art or or whatever creative field but just like as humans you know what they brought to us for sure and then also their resilience as well like mm -hmm. it wasn't you know um it wasn't, you know, their lives, you know, their personal lives and the state of the world wasn't, you know, nothing is ever really, like, as glamorous as these moments, you know? Exactly, <laughs> so exactly. they persevered. Yeah. Debbie Harry. Ah! Yeah. What was that song? Uh, Hanging on the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, world. <laughs> also the first rap, right? Oh yeah, that's Rapture. right. Yeah. We talked about that. Oh man, I'm not sure if anyone knows this, but yeah, Blondie uh, brought um, hip hop and rap like to a, such a larger audience. Yeah. So and then Elvis piece, you know. Ooh, we're classic. Yeah. So um, that's kind of what I've been working on. Well, I'll actually pull this one out. Um. And so, so yeah, so this is kind of like, these are the pieces that uh, I've been working on that are just abstracts. And you can really see, like, you can see the type in there, you know, it kind of shows through. Um, so many layers. Yeah. Um, and then also like the surf pieces. Give me one second. So like, these are the surf pieces. 
you know, and they're they're going back really to like uh, like 1950s California surf culture. Um,